Okay, thank you very much for inviting me here at uh, London Life Endoscopy. So it's my pleasure to give uh, this uh, talk on uh, optimizing uh, detection of lesions, endoscopic diagnosis of early esophageal and gastric neoplasia. These are my uh, disclosures. So the first question is, why do you give me, why was I given this talk? The problem is, there is there a problem with the diagnosis of neoplasia in the upper GI tract in general? Why do we need to talk about this? Well, if we look at this recent publication from Poland, uh, it's a registry-based study with over 4 million patients looking at almost, almost 6 million endoscopies. It's actually striking that uh, the missed upper GI cancer diagnosed as a cancer that was diagnosed between 6 and 36 months after uh, a diagnostic endoscopy without any significant findings. You can see this is 6%. So for early squamous cell cancer, this is 4.2%. For uh, adenocarcinoma, 6.1, and for uh, gastric cancers, 5.7%. So it's throughout the GI tract, uh, and you can see uh, that in patients with more severe uh, morbidity, where we don't focus so much on little lesions, uh, this was more frequently found. And also, when we expected uh, less, like in female patients, there was uh, were also more missed lesions. And even if we know that there is something going on in that esophagus, it is sometimes difficult to find uh, the next uh, the lesions. Next slide, please. So this is a study from Amsterdam looking at the uh, referring of patients with dysplasia in the esophagus. And you can see that 40% of the lesions were referred, uh, of the patients were referred without a visible lesion. But in fact, if an experienced endoscopist had a look at this esophagus, they could find a lesion in uh, 60 uh, cases. Next slide, please. Um, and 76%. So, uh, there is, is a problem, and how can we solve this then? Well, actually, we can solve this by uh, first starting by excellent imaging. So advanced imaging, I think, is the key, because in order to do advanced imaging, it needs to uh, be emphasized that cleaning is necessary. So you would never pick up these small lesions here in this barrier's esophagus or at the angulus if you don't clean uh, the esophagus properly. And the same goes uh, for the stomach, obviously. And the advantage of advanced imaging techniques is that it comes automatically with high-definition endoscopy. And you can see in this study uh, from Nottingham that at least for Barrett's esophagus, the use of high-definition endoscopy is associated with better detection of lesions. Next slide, please. So, uh, so the advanced imaging also provides a better contrast and detail. For instance, you have to think about the indication. If you're following a patient up for a gastroscopy the first time and you use NBI and there's intestinal metaplasia, you can see that narrow band imaging in this case really highlights the intestinal metaplasia elegantly. Next uh, slide. And then uh, for, uh, there's even a study showing with BLI that this increases the detection of neoplasia in the stomach. So I think there's a lot of evidence there to show that it can help in daily practice. Next slide, please. So and also when we talk about Barrett's, uh, next slide, you can see that there is a nice uh, uh, highlighting of small lesions. If you look at the next picture, please. You can see that the small subtle lesions are highlighted by the contrast that is enabled by using virtual chromoendoscopy or even acidic acid uh, at the left corner where this is really as a red flag technique indicating where the neoplasia is. Next slide. And when we see patients that are known with, for instance, ENT cancers, we should use advanced imaging techniques like Lugol or also narrow band imaging to highlight these areas of Lugol voiding lesions or, uh, patient or lesions with an altered interpapillary capillary loops, which you can see on the left side image. Next slide. So when we use these techniques, obviously you need to take your time. This is of uh, a very important essence because uh, if you don't take your time, you will not be able to find the lesions. Next click. So uh, this is supported by several pieces of evidence. Uh, next, so that you can see two gastric studies here showing that if you take more se than seven minutes in the Singapore study, that you are more likely to find high-risk lesions, 14% versus 6%, and more dysplasia in cancer uh, when you use at least seven minutes of inspection time. Next. And also in the uh, later study from uh, uh, South Korea, it was shown that if you have at least a cutoff of three minutes of inspection time in the stomach, that you have more detection of lesions. Next slide. And next. 
And for Barrett's, we know the study from Gupta, where you can see that at least one minute of inspection time is needed to increase uh, the, 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 the dysplasia and lesion detection rate in the esophagus. And obviously, it does not only uh, depend on the time uh, that you spend in the esophagus or the stomach, but also what you do during that inspection. Next, next slide. So you need to take your time and look at subtle lesions to make sure that you find subtle uh, lesions, like for instance, in the stomach or in the esophagus. Uh, so you will never be able to find these subtle lesions unless you clean the esophagus uh, or clean the stomach and really uh, focus on these subtle abnormalities like bleeding, uh, slightly elevated lesions or erosions. Next click. And then it comes down to training. I think we need to get acquainted with, these, uh, with the aspect of these subtle lesions. In the past, we, we thought there were no flat lesions in the colon uh, until Bjorn Rembach published actually a paper in the beginning of 2000 that it actually exists also in the West. And the same goes, obviously, for finding these lesions in the upper GI tract. And there are some nice training modules out there. Uh, and I would like to refer to the Bone Project, which is online and is a validated training tool to detect small subtle lesions in Barry's esophagus. And I think by doing that, you will be able to also find more subtle lesions in the stomach but the because the aspect of these lesions is quite the same. And then obviously, uh, you also want to learn to characterize. And for that, we have the ESG curriculum. Next slide where uh, you can actually see that's not so difficult. You need about 20 cases of each of these lesions with a feedback of histology uh, to get acquainted with the aspect of the lesions. And this is a start. I think everybody should start doing this in order to become familiar with a better detection. Next slide. So this brings me to my conclusions. So I think if we want to target improved detection, it comes down to using high definition endoscopy with advanced imaging techniques. We need to clean the esophagus and the stomach, preferably with cymethicon, and take your time to inspect. And we need to put some effort on training and lesion detection. But in the end, next slide, it all comes down to using our eyes and to see uh, where the lesions are, are to be found. Thank you very much for your attention.